Hello, my name is Alice Lister and as you can probably tell I'm from Scotland and when I was growing up in Scotland one of the traditions was to have a dumpling on your birthday, a birthday dumpling. But we didn't call it a birthday dumpling, we called it a clouty dumpling and a clout in Scotland is a cloth. So today I've brought along my mum, Betty Martin, who's the expert at making the clouty dumplings and she's going to talk you through the process of how you make a clouty dumpling. Over to you, Mum. Take it away. What have you got here for us today? Well, this is the old, old recipe that's about 80, 90 years old. The birthday dumpling. And in Scotland, it's called a clouty dumpling. So what have we got in it? What the ingredients are is flour. Self-raising flour. Sugar. Cup. Now, you're using, instead of using, um, weighing out these ingredients, the tradition is to use a cup, a teacup. Yes. Okay, so we've got three cups of self-raising flour. One cup of cup sugar. of sugar. Suet. A Torah suet. So this is beef suet for dumplings and puddings and pies. Three ounces of that. Then your fruit. You have half a pound of raisins, half a pound of currants, one ounce of peel, orange peel or crystallised peel, then half a teaspoonful of salt, half a teaspoonful of ginger, half a teaspoonful of spice, one and a half teaspoonfuls of cinnamon, and your baking soda, one teaspoonful of baking soda. A cabinet of soda. And what do we do with them? You mix all these, put all these into your bowl. Did you sieve it in your day or was it just chucked in? No. <laughs> in this is a... my day, considering I'm 89 years of age, uh, we didn't run to sieves and everything. It was just put into the bowl. And your sugar. And your suet. All your fruit. Then all your spices, they're all mixed in here. And that's all your ingredients. So now, we need a wooden spoon now. You mix all this into a stiff dough. With milk. Okay, just get my wooden spoon here. There you go. Here. Okay, where's your milk? Oh, we've got the post crystal out today. Now if you want to make it dark, nice and dark, you can add a spoonful, a big teaspoonful of treacle, we call it, but I think you would call it molasses. But that's optional. Now, I'm going to show you, when you put it in your pot, it must be kept at boiling point. It must bubble. So you put a plate in the bottom of your pot and the plate rattles. Now if you don't keep topping up with boiling water I'll show you what happens. This is my cloth. 
that I used last time. And this is what happens if you don't keep it topped up with water. Your cloth will stick to the bottom of your pot. So therefore today I will need to put another cloth inside it. Now how do you make sure that your, your cloth is clean? Well, good question. You pour boiling water on your cloths. Put them in your basin. Pour your boiling water on. And then when you pour your boiling water on, you bring them out scatter flour and the reason we do that is to make a skin on the outside when the dumpling is cooked you get a nice skin So they look pretty clean to start with, but this is just giving them an extra little disinfect with boiling water. Boiling water. Do you want the flour over? Right. Do you want the flour over? Yes, please. Now I remember when I used to have this at my grand's, there used to be little trinkets in it. Yes. In our old days, you always put, because it was usually for a birthday, you usually put in what you don't get now, silver threepenny bits. And sometimes a thimble, a silver thimble. But you had to watch that you didn't swallow them. <laughs> so you take your towels. Put this one here, <laughs> mine's a bit, so we'll put this one in here. Then we put some flour on it. And during the war, could you still get currants and fruit and all the rest of it? Was this, you know, when you were growing up in the, were you still able to get all the fruit? Was it your rationing or how did you, how did you no, get it? No, during the war, there was no such thing as just dumplings. No, my goodness, no, we didn't have anything like that. So after the war, it was a luxury to get all these things again. Now that's just to coat it to give it a skin. So here we go. This, this is the hard bit now. Now, this is not so easy for me nowadays because I don't have the strength that I used to have. But we'll see how we go on.
So when it was during the war and it was a birthday, what would you do for a birthday treat? Oh, well, if you were very, very lucky, your mum would maybe manage to get butter and, and stuff to make a cake, a small sponge cake, but you would need to save up all your rations for a week or two weeks to be able to do that. So what rations did you get? What did your book consist of? Oh, two ounces of butter to last a week. No sweets for about two or three years and then gradually sweets started to come in. But when the shops got them, people would hear that there were sweets in the shop and they all used to queue. They would queue for an hour, two hours to get some sweets and you were allowed two ounces of sweets a week. Per person? Per person. So your dad would and give up we, his... We had, there were four in the family, my mum, dad, my brother and myself. And when my mum would be fortunate enough to get some, she would divide the sweets into four. We all got our share, but my dad put his in a tin. And then, maybe at the end of the week, one night he would say, who would like a sweetie? Of course, we had eaten all ours. So out would come his share, and it would be all split up into another four. And that's what we're going to buy. I never had fruit, never had bananas, oranges, anything. And I remember one day at school, somebody came in at lunchtime and said, Oh, the shop across the road has sweets. And we could in our lunch hour for them. And it turned out it was ice cream wafers. It wasn't even sweets. And we thought that was a treat to even get that. Now, gather all this up. Like that. And you tie that with a string. And what have you got to do to it? When you have it like that, what did we always do when we were children? Well, we used to all want to scalp its bottom. To scalp is a good old Scottish word for smack. That's the word for smack. Today, it would be smack its bottom. But it's not In allowed our today. Day, <laughs> it's not allowed today. Our day, it was scalp its bum. <laughs> Come on, scalp its bum. And that's what we did. Gets it into a nice dumpling shape. Put some string around that, keep it tight. When we were small, the best bit was we used to fight to see who would get the bowl. Right, so the next step is your pot. As I told you, 
straight in the bottom so it will rattle. Oil and water. And that pot looks as if it's been around for some time. I'm 89 years of age and my mother used that all my life that I can remember. That was the dumper pot. So you didn't do that in the laundry and that as well? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. But that was used and for soup sometimes, but mostly it was a dumper pot. And that's it. And my daughter still loves it today for her birthday. We still have clouty dumplings. We have birthday cakes as well. Yes. But yes. you can tell them about um, what used to happen with my birthday cake from the city <laughs> bakeries. Well, I have a very sweet tooth. And birthday cakes, what birthday cakes, always had icing covered with icing and little icing drops all all round it and my family didn't know until they were about 12 13 14 years of age that there were dots round about because i picked up <laughs> i picked off all the little buttons of icing and gave them. we were deprived children <laughs> right so it's coming to the boil and how long do we leave that for boiling away now? About two hours. And what do you have to remember to do? Keep topping it up with boiling water. Okay, so we'll come back in two hours and see what the clouty dumpling looks like. Right, this is two hours later. And hopefully this should be ready. So put it on a plate. Whew. Now, the next stage is you put it in the oven, just a moderate oven, just for about five minutes, and that's to just firm up the outside skin. So, we'll get this two hours later, and hopefully this will be ready. And you put it in just a moderate oven, just for a wee while to form the skin. Some people prefer the skin. I don't, I like the nice inside. But it's just to make it nice and firm. Now, whoa, whoa, this is hot. So you get a plate. And that's where your skin came from when you put the flower covering on, wasn't yeah, that's it? That's why you had the flower. It looks like a big haggis. Just pop this into the oven.
How long? Maybe five, ten minutes. Okay, and the final proof is in the e-time. Okay, so now it's the moment of truth. The final reveal. The dumpling has dried off in the oven. Okay, Grant, take it across. The family are waiting. That looks lovely, Grant. This is a small piece for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, what different ways could you serve it, Gran? Hot out the oven like this. We are just going tonight to have it with some cream, I think. Thank you. But you can have it with coffee. But the most delicious way of all is when it's cold the next day or two or three days after, to have it fried <laughs> with bacon. <laughs> oh, now you're talking. Because the Scots love everything fried. <laughs> well, Jenny, give us your opinion on it. Lovely. Delicious. And it was Gran's birthday last week, so it's really Gran's birthday dumpling. So what age were you, Gran? <laughs> Eight. <laughs> no. <laughs>